Welcome back to my channel guys. Today we have my first baby bump date. I thought I was filling, but I wasn't. Originally I had planned on doing a first, second, and third trimester vlog video that would just go over the whole trimester, but <laughs> I got into my second trimester and I realized the only filming I had done in my first trimester was finding out I was pregnant. And now I'm 18 weeks, so I'm well into my second trimester and I haven't filmed anything. So I figured, you know, it's just gonna be easier for me if I just do bump dates. That's what we're doing today. I said this in previous pregnancies, but I just, I can't get over the week to week vegetable fruit comparison. They make no sense to me. A navel orange in my head is totally bigger than a pear, but then the pear is the week after the orange. And then an avocado for me is like the same size as a pear. So why is that a week later? It's not any difference in size. And then I'm like, okay, a large onion. That makes sense. And then this week, 18 weeks, a cucumber? There are some big cucumbers out there and then there are some smaller cucumbers out there. It just, it makes no sense to me at all. Anyways, apparently the baby is the size of a cucumber this week. Tiny fingerprints. Your one of a kind baby is truly one of a kind now with unique fingerprints on those little fingertips and toes. Myelin, a protective insulation is starting to form around baby to be's nerves. This covering continues to grow until your baby's first birthday. And having a girl, the fallopian tubes in uterus are now in position, a boy genitals may be visible on your next ultrasound. Well, I certainly hope so because we are finding out if we're having a boy or a girl. <laughs> what else is going on? Now for the skill of the week, the art of the yawn has been mastered by your baby along with hiccuping, which you may feel soon too. I use the what to expect pregnancy app and I used it in my pregnancy with Meredith and I really liked it. So I'm using that this time around too. And that is the 18 week update. So yes, by the time you guys are watching this I will be 18 and a half weeks pregnant this pregnancy has gone by so fast like to think that I'm almost halfway that in two weeks or a week and a half I'll be at the 20 week mark it just blows my mind my pregnancy prior to my ultrasound felt like it just dragged on so slow because I was counting down the days until I could actually have my ultrasound and my ultrasound wasn't until I was 13 weeks so it took a really long time for me mentally to just even feel like I was actually pregnant and I definitely had a lot of just concerns because I would have a ton of cramping and then dramatically no cramping and it was like is this okay and of course in my head I know it's normal I know it's okay but then the cramping would suddenly come back full force and it was like oh my goodness am I okay now if you've been pregnant before you know that feeling of is everything okay what's going on and getting to that first ultrasound is just a huge relief to hear there's a heartbeat that the baby is progressing well I know for me there's this nagging feeling until I get to my ultrasound of all you've done is peed on a stick. What if you're not actually pregnant? It was really nice to actually get to my ultrasound, which it was probably... I don't know. It wasn't a great ultrasound. It was awesome that I got to see my baby, but at the same time, I had to go to a imaging place that I've never been to before because where I wanted to go was completely full. And... Um, it could have been better. <laughs> I had to drink like double the amount of water I normally do at that imaging place and I've had to do at previous places. I don't know why it was so much, but I did it because the last thing I want to do is show up and then be like, sorry, you didn't drink enough water, come back another time. So I drank all the water and they were 20 minutes, 25 minutes late in actually getting me into an ultrasound. And I was honestly in complete physical pain. I felt sick almost from how much I was in pain. And usually in the past when I've done ultrasound and I have a very full bladder, the ultrasound tech will do the imaging that the full bladder is needed for and then they'll be like, you can go relieve yourself and come back. This person did not let me do that. It could have been better. <laughs> But it was actually really, really sweet because funny enough, I had an ultrasound booked the next day after my dating ultrasound and that was for a completely different matter. My doctor wanted to see if I had gallstones. Long story short, I don't, but I had to go in for an ultrasound just to make sure. And while I was there, I was talking to the tech about my previous experience from the day before and how that ultrasound was a lot nicer to prepare for than my dating ultrasound was. And this tech is just awesome. I've had her before. 
her, she's lovely, and she was like, you know what, while we're here, let's just look at your baby for fun. And so she actually showed me my baby and went over like heartbeat and head and there's the feet and she even gave me a picture and I just, oh, I was just so thankful for that. I just thought it was so sweet and that ultrasound experience was way better than the one I had had before. It was just so nice to get past that point and be told everything's okay, nothing to worry about, you're progressing really great and baby's looking really healthy. And since then, that was five, yeah, five weeks ago, this baby has popped. Like my bump at least has just popped. It feels really dramatic how much it's popped in the last couple weeks, but I love it. It just, it makes me feel even more pregnant, right? Cause you, like I said, you spend so long going, am I even pregnant? And then you get your ultrasound and it's like, yes, you are pregnant. There is a human life there. You're all good. And then the growing baby bump is just extra signs of that. And I love that second trimester baby bump where you're not like a whale yet, but you got a baby bump and you feel cute and you look cute and everyone's like, oh my gosh, you're so cute. In the beginning of my pregnancy, I did have some nausea. First I was like, oh my gosh, does this mean I'm having a boy? Because I've never had nausea before with any of my pregnancies. I had a tiny bit of nausea here or there. I didn't have it every day. I didn't have it every week. It wasn't really all that intense. And this time around, I just, I felt sick. And there were certain things that almost triggered the nausea. I couldn't even edit YouTube videos without feeling sick. So all those videos that came up after I found out I was pregnant before I announced it, I felt sick editing them. It was very, very rough. I couldn't make coffee at home, whatever it was, just the idea of having homemade coffee with my milk frother. I couldn't do it. I don't know if it was the smell of the frothed milk that made me feel sick. And because I associated that with homemade coffee, that my brain was like, you can't have that. I definitely had my share of going out and buying coffee because I needed coffee and I couldn't have it at home. So that was a really weird and really horrible side effect of feeling nauseous. But thankfully I ended up talking to my midwife. It was actually the one appointment I've had so far and it was over the phone and I was telling her that I was feeling nauseous. She asked if I was on any supplements and I told her I was on the folic acid for my first trimester and that I was also taking iron supplements because I felt like my iron was low and she was like I bet that's it she said I'm sure that you're feeling nauseous either you're having twins which I'm not ultrasound proved it already or it's the iron supplement that is making you feel sick so I decided I would rather have low iron than feel nauseous for my first trimester so I immediately got off of the iron and felt a lot better very quickly but because I had that mental association with different things making me feel nauseous. It still took me a bit of time to actually edit videos or drink coffee at home again without feeling sick. But as you can see, I'm drinking homemade coffee. There's no steamed or whipped milk in it, but it's okay. It's homemade coffee. I can drink it and not feel sick. And I'm very thankful for that. Aside from feeling nauseous, I've had a lot of cramping on and off. It'll be like a few days, I'll have a whole ton of cramping and then it'll just be gone the next day and I'll be fine. And then a few days later, it'll come back again, but it's in both sides and it isn't causing me too much discomfort. Ever since I have seen that the baby is doing well on the ultrasound, it doesn't give me any concern. However, I have been having the weird dreams. The weird dreams have officially kicked in. They are weird, okay? Like last night I had a dream that Charlotte, her, I was looking up in the top of the roof of her mouth because she was complaining about something hurting. And I was looking up in the, in the roof of her mouth and she had along the back of the top, like the roof of her mouth on the back, she had three layers of teeth, like almost like a shark has like the layers of teeth. And she had all these extra layers of teeth. And I was like, that, what the heck is that? And then I felt pain in the back of my mouth in my dream. And I looked up at the roof of my mouth and I had the same thing, and then they all started falling out. It was just the weirdest dream ever, and I woke up and I like felt the roof of my mouth with my tongue, just to make sure it wasn't real, but that was weird, and that's just one of the weird dreams that I've had lately. But yeah, it's funny, I haven't even had a midwife appointment yet, aside from the first one that I did. Other than that, I haven't had any appointments. I haven't gone in. I think I'm supposed to. I did email and ask, but I asked like a few questions in the same email, and they might have missed that question being like, do I need to come in? But I'm 18 weeks and I haven't had an appointment yet in person, so I feel like I should really do that. I am also a horror.
horrible procrastinator, but at the same time, I feel like I'm totally justified because I've got three kids with me, but I haven't gone and done my blood work yet. I was supposed to go in when I was like 10 weeks pregnant, nine weeks pregnant or something. I was supposed to go in and get blood work done and I have not yet done it, but I think it's okay because I haven't even gone for my midwife appointment yet. Maybe I'll try to do it this weekend. Maybe I'll just, I'll rip the bandaid and I'll go super early in the morning on a day that Eli's off and just get in and get it done. I really don't mind having not had a midwife appointment yet. This is my fourth pregnancy. I feel really comfortable in it. I definitely know about pregnancy and I know very well about my own pregnancy. So I don't feel like I need to go in and see the midwife. I have my 20 week ultrasound in a couple weeks and I did get in where I love going for ultrasounds. It's just, there, it's, there's nothing special about this imaging location. It's just the techs are absolutely incredible. They always have been. I've never had a bad experience there, but I've only had not so great experiences everywhere else. So I am very excited that I get to go back to that imaging location. A couple more weeks until I get to go back and see that beautiful baby and we will be finding out gender. We will be having our gender reveal that weekend of my ultrasound. And then once we know if we're having a boy or girl, I get to actually pick out a baby nickname for them. If you're new to my channel, I actually had a nickname for Meredith when I was pregnant with her because we did find out we were having a girl and I needed a nickname, just a pregnancy nickname for her so that I wouldn't spill her actual name. And her nickname was Scotty. If we're having another girl, I think I know what the nickname will be, but I have no idea if we are having a boy. <laughs> At this point, my gut is saying girl. In all of my past pregnancies, I have had dreams about baby. And before I ever found out with the other girls that I was having girls, I had dreams that I had girls. And I don't know if that's like my subconscious or something is more in tune with what's going on in my body than I am and can detect the rise or lowering in different hormones that means I'm having a boy or a girl. And then I just, when I'm dreaming that I'm having a baby, that my subconscious puts a girl in because I'm having a girl. I don't know, it's a total theory. It could be complete pokey pokey, hocus pocus, whatever the whatever the term is, it could be wrong. I, with all my other pregnancies, guessed boy the whole time because I just had this, ah, it'll probably just be a boy and I didn't go with my gut. So this time I'm going with my gut and I am guessing girl. <laughs> but then I was also thinking about it and I've had a couple girlfriends who have had their first babies this year and I was so sure, like in my gut, knew what they were having. One of my friends, I thought for sure, you're having a girl, no question. Like I was so convinced of it that I kept forgetting they hadn't actually found out that they were having a girl, like they hadn't found out at all. And then she had her baby and I was like, that's a weird name for a girl. Like, okay, like, I mean, no judgment. Everybody can name their kid whatever they want, but like, sh like a little far off, but sure. And then I went, wait, oh, she had a boy. What? Oh, okay. And then another friend of mine just had her first baby and I was sure the whole time in my gut it was a boy and the exact same thing. I, I had to remind myself they didn't find out what they were having and that we actually don't know. And then she sent me a picture and she told me baby's name and I went, that's a weird name for a boy. Why would they name a boy that? And then I realized that she actually had a girl. So now I'm second questioning my own gut because I was so sure with my girlfriends as to what they were having and I was totally wrong. So maybe my gut for myself is totally wrong this time and I am absolutely 110% overthinking everything. Thankfully, there's only a couple more weeks to go before I actually know. However, I am so certain we're having a girl that, like I said, I have already picked out a pregnancy nickname for her. I just have to get Eli to sign off on it. And then we have already picked out our baby girl first name. We don't have our middle name set yet, but we have the first name and I have nothing for a boy. We don't have a name for a boy. I thought we did, but apparently we don't. I don't have a boy nickname. I, there is nothing boy in my brain so it would be a lot easier if we just had a girl but if we have a boy at least we have 20 weeks or in my case 21 weeks to figure out what on earth we're gonna name him is this an angelic moment or what <laughs> oh there we go okay we're calming down my sciatica is already kicking in i am not happy about this <laughs> i get sciatica in all my pregnancies so i was definitely expecting it and i'm already using my mother's wellness by sage which is a oil blend it's supposed to on stretch marks, I will tell you right now, it doesn't do that, nor do I use it for that 
purpose, the purpose which it serves for me very well and which is why I use it all the time, is because it helps just to moisturize my skin so well that my stomach isn't as itchy while it expands. <laughs> if I don't use the oil, my stomach gets so itchy. It's really uncomfortable and irritating, literally. So by using the Mother's Wellness Oil at night before I go to bed, I wake up with a very moisturized belly and I will rarely feel itchy throughout the day. I might have felt baby move uh, about a week ago. I was laying in bed and I just, I kind of felt this like rumble, if that makes sense, like right where baby is. And I was like, is that, was that, was that? gas that felt a little bit different than gas but like was it and then gas never came and in the past when I've gone that was definitely gas that wasn't a baby movie gas has come and it has gone <laughs> but this time it didn't there was no gas to be gone so I think it was baby but I I don't know it wasn't obvious enough for me to tell I also don't know yet if I have a anterior or posterior placenta Beverly and Charlotte I had an anterior placenta so my placenta was right in front and it act as a cushion so I couldn't feel their movements for quite some time like I don't think I could even feel Bev move until I was 26 weeks Charlotte was I think 22 23 weeks I started to feel movement and knew it was her movement and with Meredith I had a posterior placenta so I actually at the 20 week mark could feel her moving I don't know what I have this time around I forgot to ask the technician to let me know what I had but I will find out in a couple weeks as well but yeah other than that I'm feeling Feeling really good all around. I'm trying not to be so hard on my body as it again changes a whole lot. I've always been very judgmental of my own body in that way going oh my goodness like why are you gaining weight there? Why are you stretching out here? And I haven't just enjoyed why those changes are happening. So this time around I'm really trying to keep more of a positive attitude and be comfortable in my own body. So that's what I'm working on this pregnancy. But yeah guys other than all all of that I'm feeling really great I'm feeling really good at 18 weeks and I can't wait to do more bump dates in the future where I have some more nitty-gritty fun details for you and next bump date guys we're gonna know if the Lord has given us a baby boy or baby girl I I can't wait to find out I'm so excited <laughs> to make sure you don't miss that bump date and gender reveal don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button that like button thank you so much for clicking on my face and I will see you guys in my next video